Ding dong YouTube, welcome back to the channel. It is now the 21st day since an arson was committed in Lake Louise against my house, which burned to the ground. It has now been three weeks since the fire. Well, tomorrow will be Monday. Today is Sunday, and I'm doing the 20th and 21st day update in one video here, Saturday, Sunday, over the weekend. Um, when I started doing these videos, I never anticipated that it would go on this long, but the updates are continuous. Every single day there's something new that's moving and changing here in Lake Louise. So I decided that I'm going to continue to do these videos, and I want to thank everyone who watches them. I figured in today's video it would be interesting to actually show you some of the items which I have retrieved back from the fire. I haven't had a chance yet to clean them, so they're still covered in dirt. I want you to see them as they are in their current form before I go and, and clean them off. So, with regards to the update for the weekend, yesterday being Saturday, I decided to stay put in Sunshine Village where I'm currently residing. Um, I didn't really do much. I mostly slept most of the day, did some work on my computer. Um, but yesterday was an important day because for those people who were in the Deer Lodge and the Lake Louise Inn and a few people in the campground, they've already started to move them into the new temporary housing structures which have been constructed uh, in the campground area of one of the parking lots which is turned into a makeshift campground and these modular units are going to be there for the foreseeable future. Now they're bringing in at the end of the week a second unit of these modular homes with another 49 beds and then they said in the email today that they were going to be looking at potentially other options so I don't know if there's a third round of these trailers planned Potentially, being here in Sunshine Village, we will be the last ones moved, and I don't know what they might have available when it comes time for that for us here. Um, so that's kind of the situation as it is. All of the clothing donations have been moved upstairs into the Six Mark Lounge, where uh, they before they were in what was known as the North Face. They've turned North Face back into a seatable restaurant, as it will be the new cafeteria area for all staff to go and get fed, um, who are being moved into the trailers. Before, they were just doing, for the past two weeks here, um, a meal voucher program for lunch while you're at work. Now it is three meals a day. You're going to get a voucher for breakfast, a voucher for lunch, and a voucher for dinner. And there's set times for that, courtesy of the food and beverage department. So once again, it seems that we have become some of the most important employees here at the ski resort, as we are responsible for feeding everyone. This being three weeks now since the fire, um, it is now the point, this week will be the point, at which I have spent as much time p past the fire as I had living here prior to the fire, because it'll be six weeks since I originally moved for the job here. Um, I'm still doing four days on and three days off, so I get three day weekends. And for today, I plan to go into Banff later in the evening and see the new Oppenheimer movie. And then hopefully I don't get stranded there. I'm told the only other way back to Sunshine Village is with a taxi, which is like $100. I think some of my friends are going to be going to see the movie around the same time. So hopefully I understand some of them have a car, you know, maybe I can catch a ride with them. Worst case scenario, I always take my sleeping bag with me wherever I go just in case I get stranded. I can just roll it out on a picnic table somewhere and crash there for the night. So that's my plan for today. Basically, I want to do a hike in the afternoon, come back, get supper, and then go and see the Oppenheimer movie in the evening. And then maybe in the morning I'll work out at the gym here and, and do some other stuff here. But I figured now I'll show you. Um, I have here laid out on the table in front of me. These are the items which were retrieved from the fire. Most of these items all came from a single drawer in my dresser. There is an additional item that is not featured here because if I put it on the table, it would be a violation, I think, of YouTube's guidelines and policies. 
it is a silicon phallus that was in the same drawer as these objects and i swear to god it was brand new never even taken out of the package of course no one here believes me when i tell them that but my co-workers got a good laugh out of it when they found it in the pile of retrieved items they turned it into a ring toss device so that was a little bit of fun that they had for the evening so the first thing that I noticed, which was mine, was this certificate here. It was taped up on my wall, and you can see it. Um, actually, no, not this one. This is the letter that came with the certificate there. This letter was originally taped up on my wall, and then the tape gave way about like the first week here, and it fell between the bed and my dresser. It was sitting on the floor between the bed and the dresser, and so it wasn't actually on the wall. Um, but I didn't bother to put it back up. When I went into the locker room where all the objects were laid out, it was sitting on the ground like this, upside down. And I think I might have even stepped on it. And I looked down and I noticed these four black squares are the tape. And it's laminated and I thought, gee, that looks awfully familiar. I had a laminated certificate with four black squares taped to the wall. I wonder if it's mine. So I picked it up and turned it over and I said, no fucking way. This was the first evidence that I had that not everything in my room had burned. Now, it is obviously destroyed and if you take a close look at it, there's a big hole in the middle of it there. The paper is actually ripped. The lamination seal has been broken and there's a bunch of ash and dirt and stuff in there. So I've contacted ISSA. They will be issuing me a new certificate, but it is legible enough that it would be, I think, I think it would pass as credentials or qualifications. Now, I did not find the ISSA certificate with this because my manager found that and took it. And he kept it in his trailer for me because obviously you can see it's got my name there on it and it's completely legible and so I picked this up last from him just the other day and although the seal of this lamination is not broken you can see there's a good bit of burning or charring or melting so this was up on the wall it proves that there was a great deal of heat in that room. Originally, I had thought, given the number of plastic things that survived, that the fire didn't impact our room that much. But this is definitely proof that it has because of the melted lamination. I had a bottle of rubbing alcohol sitting on my windowsill just a few feet away from where these certificates were. So that was probably the accelerant that lit the pride flag in my window on fire as well as the curtains. The hats hanging above that would have burned and potentially the metals that I had on the wall, the plastic ribbons that were there would have burned. Maybe the metal part of the metal is still there. Those are metals from the Conqueror. They do this like virtual challenge where you can walk or run certain distances to achieve the metals. So both of these are basically destroyed and will probably be thrown in the garbage. That one, the certificate, may be retrievable if I remove it from the lamination. Now, the next object that I found was actually this box here for the Amazon Echo Dot. It was sitting on one of the benches, or I think I found it in a, in a milk carton actually. And as soon as I saw that, I knew that this device had been there somewhere in the pile. So I mentioned that and one of the ladies who works in housing said that she saw this in the back of the truck and they dug around in the pile for a bit and then she found this. And as you can see, there's no physical damage to it. It is very dusty and dirty, and all of the objects in this room reek of cigarette smoke. And so I believe if I just clean this off and wipe it down, it should still function. It doesn't appear that there's been any water damage to it either as a result of them spraying water from the fire trucks into the room. There's no leakage or anything like that. And it's been several weeks since, so any water that would have been there would have dried. Uh, the cable for this, I don't know where it is, but I assume it would have come in the box and it could still be in the locker room buried under a bunch of stuff or maybe someone thought it was a cable for their device and, and took it. So I'll have to get a cable to actually see if this will still work. 
and then in that same milk carton I found the instruction manuals all damaged and banged up so given the state of the box here covered in ash and dust and how broken it is I can be very certain that the dresser which this was inside of was completely destroyed by things falling on top of it the fact that this wasn't crushed to pieces serves that potentially the drawers above oh, the drawer that this came out of was the second from the bottom and then three drawers above that was pants shirts and then the top drawer was socks and underwear so potentially the three drawers of clothing and above acted as enough of compression with the falling debris that it prevented these things from being destroyed but the boxes were crushed now my laptop was sitting on top of my dresser and so I can be reasonably certain that it is busted into a billion trillion pieces because it would have been the first thing the floor and roof above collided with as they were falling through the air. So the final thing that I got back, well actually the, the phallus I mentioned before, I got that back the night before, only because I went down to the campground for that weekend, it was my birthday weekend, and I got a piece of birthday cake and sat down at the picnic table to eat it, and for whatever reason I felt compelled to look under the picnic table and there was this thing sitting on the ground and I said, no fucking way, because I immediately recognized it as mine. So that was uh, how I got that item back first, actually. And this was I got the next day when I went to the locker room. And then, finally, I saw on one of the benches this plastic container for the Xbox controller. Now, there are plenty of people who had Xbox controllers in the building. My roommate was one of them. I think he had two. But the fact that I took mine in a brand new package, it was not never even used. This controller was brand freaking new. It was a Christmas present from my dad. Well, Santa, really, but my dad. Um, I had this custom controller designed that he ordered on the Xbox site. Originally, this got lost in the mail, and then I thought I would never get it. And then it showed up like two months later, and then it came in, in the mail, and I, I finally got that. So that was nice, but now it's kind of like not so new anymore. Um, I saw this, and I knew that my Xbox controller had to be around somewhere. And I, I described it to some of my friends, and they immediately, within like three minutes, found this. And they said, here you go, this is yours, because it's orange and blue, and no one else had an orange and blue custom-colored controller. You can see the amount of dirt on it, and like the plastic here is kind of banged up, like on the D-pad. It's a little bit scraped up. I don't know how much dirt has gotten inside through some of the crevices. Um, there was no batteries in this because it was brand new, so had it been sprayed with water, there would have been nothing for it to short circuit as there was no power flowing through it. I'm fairly certain that by now it's dry uh, enough to use, I just need to clean it off. And so, unfortunately, the dirt here has probably gotten on the inside, so it may not last as long as like a controller that hasn't been damaged. You know, some of these ports may not connect properly, but I'm going to give it a try and hopefully it still works. Um, otherwise, I'll have to claim that on insurance to get a new Xbox controller. So this is the extent of everything that I got back from from what I had in the room. In that same drawer, there was a few other items that did not survive, one of which was a like Bluetooth LED light bulb, the type where you can program it on your phone to change to certain colors. I know full well there's no fucking way that survived um, because it's a light bulb. It would have been smashed into a trillion pieces. Um, my mom was confused as to why it is that they kept some of this plastic stuff like the container and the box there and as soon as I'm done filming this video these are going in the trash because there's no reason to keep them really um, my only thought was that they pulled this out with the controller inside and that somehow they got separated and in two different locations and then I found this first finding this plastic told me that the controller was there somewhere had I not seen this plastic I would not have known, and potentially I might have missed this, and someone else might have taken it. But because I saw the plastic, I knew that the controller was there. Same with the box. Because I found the box first, I knew the Amazon Echo Dot was there. So maybe that was part of their thinking, was that if we take this 
stuff that's garbage and we put it with the pile of things, the person who owns this device will maybe find the box and know that it exists. And I don't know, that was potentially what they were thinking. Or maybe they just pulled it out and then it fell apart in the back of the truck or something. And then somehow this got separated from this and that ended up in a different place from that. And then of course, everyone's digging through the pile and moving things around. I've opened up suitcases and looked inside myself to see. And some of the clothing in there looks brand new. I don't know whether it smells. I assume that it does. Um, but then you close the suitcase back up because it's not mine. Um, the other thing that I did get back was the passport, which I mentioned before in yesterday's video, or two days ago, I guess now, that I got my passport back, which was in my suitcase. And that, I'm, I didn't bother to bring it here to showcase because it looks basically brand new, just like a regular Canadian passport, no damage on it, no scarring. The only thing is that it reeks of campfire smoke but in this case it's not a campfire it's a house fire so a lot of this ash i'm told by the fire department or the, i talked to the chief at the fire department this stuff is carcinogenic so it'll cause cancer if you inhale too much of it so he says if you do get clothing back he recommends throwing all of it away unless it's like irreplaceable or sentimental in which case wash it several times because unlike a campfire which you just burn wood in a house fire you're burning chemicals and plastics and toxins and all that sort of stuff that this this ash is so that's what makes it significantly more deadly to a human than regular just campfire smoke you know you sit outside the campfire you put your clothes in the wash and, and they're pretty much fine the next day this stuff never comes out especially if the um, um, layer is is uh, porous if it's a porous object where dust can get in i mean this speaker here has holes in it obviously because it's a speaker so potentially there's some dust and stuff that has gotten inside the device that will never make it out um hopefully it's safe to use after a bit of cleaning and you know you're not going to want to get cancer from this shit but yeah what an absolute tragedy and shame that this is the extent of everything that i have left from that room <sighs> so there you have it um you've now seen firsthand the damage and destruction that a house fire causes uh, it's a miracle that I got anything back, frankly, as I'm told that our bedroom floor basically collapsed into the unit below us. And uh, the guy that retrieved the item, he recognized my name on the certificate, so he knew that I got these items back. And I spoke with him directly about how he went and retrieved the items. Um, and it doesn't set, he said there was no walls left to that room, which, yeah. The fact that the certificate that was on the wall was retrieved, I don't even fucking know how that was possible. Um, but other than that, that's about all I have for this video to share. Um, so continue following the updates here, and I guess I'll see you uh, tomorrow when I have more further news on what's, what's happening. Um, and make sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.